Season 2, Episode 8, Canva Template Key Search Terms with Jenny Long and Sally Clark. But first, a word from our sponsors. Teacher Goals and Teacher Heart Out is sponsoring a 2023 Bahamas cruise open to all educators. Guests such as spouses, family, and friends are also welcome to attend. There is an amazing lineup of speakers, and you can book your PD at sea now by putting down a $200 deposit. Attend the Sail Away Party Thursday, July 6th in Port Canaveral at 6 p.m. in preparation for Cruising Friday. You will return Monday, July 10th at 8 a.m. Scan the QR code now to sign up. You don't want to miss it. The Teacher Goals Tech Talk Tuesday will begin in 23 seconds. Would you like to find out more information on sponsoring our live stream? Email sponsorships at teachergoals.com. Without further ado, let's start the show. Hi, welcome to Teacher Goals Tech Talks. I'm Amanda Fox here with co-host Heather Brown, and we're excited you decided to hitchhike your way with us today through not only tech tools, but the pedagogies and strategies behind them. Canva has a ton of templates, and finding the perfect one can be time-consuming. So in today's episode... We're going to provide you with some keyword search terms to cut that time in half. Templates for, or templates for, templates per se. Um, we also want to announce the winner from last week's, or the week before our DOK episode. Heather, would you give me a drum roll? All right. So, um, we are giving away a DOK punch out shirt. So that way, if you forget the levels of DOK, you can wear them. Um, Deconstructing Depth of Knowledge by Eric Francis, the Canva Classroom by myself, and um, also a bunch of DOK stickers. So the winner is Chad Benke. Um, we had several Woo! people. Yay! We had several people who submitted, and um, we're excited to get that out to you hopefully this week. So um, yay! Um, Heather, you want to bring up our guest? Sure. Two special guests. They are known together as Jenny. Separately, they are Jenny and Selly from Texas. All right. Hello. Hi. 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 Hey guys. Hello. Uh, we had them on it in our ISTE live, so it's great to have you back. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Awesome. And um, for our viewers, just tell us a little bit about how you got into. Um, what was your Canva journey? Sure. Um, actually, I started using Canva, oh goodness, about eight years ago when it was in its infancy, I guess, um, at Castleberry ISD creating content for the library. I was a librarian at the time. And just over the years, I have enjoyed watching it grow into the mega house creation tool that it really is uh, today. And so, but even then it was answering problems that I needed, um, like templates, uh, creating cute little graphics and flyers for uh, library events. I remember making recipe cards for cookie competition we were having. I mean, we were making them for all kinds of different things, uh, but even um, eight years ago. So they've, but now they have turned into <laughs> just all kinds of things. You can make videos and uh, templates for all of the social medias. I mean, it's, just insane how much it has grown. It is. It is. I think I started with infographics and flyers as well. I think mm -hmm. flyers are the gateway to um, all Canva. <laughs> and the teachers come in and they're like, ew, I can make pretty flyers. And then it's like, wait, yeah. wait, hold There's on. So much more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, um, Jacqueline says she loves Canva, but definitely underutilizes it. Uh, mm -hmm. That was definitely the case for me. Um, initially, mm -hmm. I think we, we all come in and once we find all of the apps and tools to connect with it, it, it really just blossoms into something amazing. Mm -hmm. and I think does. you have to find that need. Like I started using it for, um, gosh, the swim team. I was mm -hmm. helping make um, flyers and informational um, graphics and things for events that my kids were having for school being the class mom or team mom. And then you just, you know, you, yeah, you, like you said, there's just so many other things that you can do with it, but just finding that purpose and need that 
works for you and what you need, then you see all those other things because it is overwhelming. There's so much you can do. But then it's like, once you learn a tool, you just, you want to use that tool for everything Mm because you know it so well inside and out. Mm -hmm. And so before I knew it, we were like, okay, we need to make a video. Oh, wait, we can do that in Canva. And oh, I know how to add this to it and this to it. So it just, you know, makes it easy when everything is built into one tool that you love and know. Absolutely. My, um, my daughter recently, like, throughout the year last year, she's like, Oh, I have to, I have to do this, this presentation and it's on food. And I'm like, okay, um, let's get out a post. She's like, well, what if we use Canva? And then she, she, I was like, that's, I can use it too. And then just uh, two weeks ago, she needed birthday invitations and she's like, Ooh, I'm going to make it in Canva. And here she pulls it up and here I am. I'm like, Oh, you can add a shadow there. Yeah. You can change all the colors by doing it. So, like she's sitting there and I'm like trying to be hands off and let her learn through exploratory like learning. And yeah. So um, you guys have some amazing uh, tips and tricks for searching for templates. Do you guys want to jump into that? Sure. Mm-hmm. Salee is the mastermind behind all <laughs> creations. She has a marketing degree. She is Listen. extremely gifted in that area. So our strengths <laughs> complement each other very well, she creates and does all that. And then I execute it and make sure it goes somewhere because when, <laughs> if not, it'll just live in my Canva account hidden under a template name that we don't know what it is. So there you go. <laughs> I find things, I'm like, Salee, when did you make this? Why, why are we doing anything with this? So she creates the most beautiful things. So she is definitely the brains behind all of our creations. Um, Stop it. Very, very, I am not extremely talented. We brainstorm together. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> no, but she, we love creating content. We love being, you know, former teachers ourselves and working with teachers on a daily basis. We know the need that they are constantly, um, ne- you know, they need to find things and they need to find time is, is so limited that, you know, we love creating things for, for educators. So one of the things that Slee thought one day was like, let's create, um, you know, just a graphic that has already curated search templates in it. Because you can get in there and just get lost oh, searching for things. So yeah. we just kind of put our heads together on things that um, we were looking for <laughs> and that we're, our teachers were needing. Mm-hmm. And so we've created some some fun little graphics. Every time we hear another need from a teacher, we're like, oh, let's create a, a search term graphic for that. Because we were finding, you, know, you guys know, when you're searching in Canva, I can search one thing and it might give me, you know, a hundred results and a hundred templates. I can search another term and it's going to give me a thousand templates. And so right. you're like, okay, what can we do to help teachers streamline some of these essential searches that they're looking for? And also, you know, sometimes as an educator, I may not think Canva can do that, but it can do that. It just might not be a search term that I might be thinking of. Uh, like, for example, I was trying to think of some. Uh, like an exit ticket, like you can search exit ticket and that works inside of Canva, but you also could search like, do you, did you know, or what they say, top three Q and A. So, I mean, there's lots of different templates you could use for exit ticket rather than just searching exit ticket. So we try to give teachers an idea of, and a way of looking at Canva designs and templates, you know, differently. Awesome. Um, do you want me, do you want to share your screen and share some of the templates or... <laughs> yeah, let me get those pulled up real quick. <laughs> we debated that. Like, so we have them pulled up so we can share. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Just um, a second. Um, well, while, while you're doing that, Stephanie says, I'm excited to learn. I'm teaching my future teachers how to use Canva in their future classrooms. And then Jose says, I love Canva too. My learning resources are all made in, in he says Canvas, but it's probably an autocorrect cam, Canva. And Canva yeah. and Canva together as well. So um, it's amazing how many LMS platforms that uh, you can integrate and connect to Canva itself. Mm-hmm. My school uses Google Classroom, so we love it for that. And all the teachers are obsessed with making the Google Classroom banners using Canva now. Oh, the, from from beautifying your digital spaces to your physical spaces and mm-hmm. from creating instructional materials to having kids create learning artifacts, Canva can be used for everything. And the education dashboard just rocked my world. When that came out, it was a game changer for me, having kids being able to be in a classroom and assign work and then send it back for review. So absolutely. 
Awesome. Well, we have a couple bit.ly's and I don't know, Amanda, if you're going to share those links um, as well across the screen or. Um, I am. So if you if you drop the bit.ly's in a, in a private in the private chat, I will share that with our viewers. Okay, we can do that in just a minute. All right. All right. So I don't know. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. yes. Yay. Okay. So this was our original um, creation inside of Canva with different template search terms for teachers that we found ourselves using and teachers that we were working with um, regularly. Um, in particular, my favorite is, of course, the TikTok video templates. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> And they make me so happy, uh, especially because they're fun. It brings a style of, it brings a way of gamification into our classrooms in a very relevant way, but within a safe, um, within a safe environment. And so I love the uh, TikTok video templates. Shinny, which one is your favorite? You knew TikTok was going to be mine. I didn't, yeah. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's hard. I know. I love comic strips. Yeah, she does. Um, I think comic strips are a lot of fun. I think that's something that I used when I was a, an English teacher, you know, trying to create a story. And I love that it has those storyboards already built out in the, the comic um, strips with the characters, with the, you know, facial expressions and all the little things that you can change. I think it really gives students that voice to be able to, you know, create and share. Um, another really great one that you stumbled upon once was the um, storybook. Yeah. Uh, incredible, like already has a book already in there with the story that you can go in and edit. Um, so just so many great ones that you don't, you know, that aren't just the first things that and we think about. And it was first graders actually that found the storybook template. Um, I went in to show them comic strips. And so we were doing comic strips and then um, the kids were like, well, we just wrote storybooks and we really want to show our parents and create them in Canva. Can we see if they're storybooks? So I was like, yeah, let's just search storybooks. And we did. And sure enough, they were there with everything in it, just like the comic strips from the characters, to the storyline, to the setting. Uh, so it really brought great conversations and the students were able to create their very own and first graders right there on the spot. So it was really cool. We love using HyperDocs in our mm -hmm. lesson cycle when we're teaching. We actually present a lot on um, choice boards or choice menus, and we use the HyperDoc as that engage piece where we're sharing and they're going in and, you know, choosing different things and um, to do their research and to find their information. And so, you know, you can search HyperDoc, but, you know, you don't think sometimes that some of these other search terms like storyboard or list or top five give you that that board aspect or that, you know, HyperDoc um, setup. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are some other good ones that we use when we're uh, teaching the HyperDoc cycle. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think I think my favorite is the animated presentations. I'm, yes. I use, that's what I use the most. Um, and then with all of the video new, new features that have come out with the green screen, you know, or the background remover for video, mm -hmm. I have had such a blast playing with that. And, um, I, we'll do a little demo at the, at the end. Oh yeah. That's a great idea. So again, moving into, can you guys see the student creation templates now? Mm -hmm. Oh, yay. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah. And then moving into thinking about our students and creations they can create and search terms that uh, fit. We were like, okay, let's come up with some uh, good topics there. And, you know, storytelling is one of our favorites. Print designs, digital designs, of course, video and social media as well. And I think that's one thing, you know, our students are constantly, most of the older, upper elementary, older ones um, on social media on a regular basis. And then when they come to school, it's like they have to just power down and, you know, put all that away. And then, you know, if we can tap into their world and bring those aspects that they're used to, that they are engaged in on a, you know, non-school time into the classroom, you're really going to get that buy-in from them. So being able to say, hey, I want you to make a TikTok video or I want you to make an Instagram story or a reel or you know, a Twitter YouTube post or cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any of those things that is the world that they live in, they're going to be, they're going to love that. They're going to mm -hmm. have fun with that. So we went in and searched for different terms um, for those, you know, different main topics and found some, some other good search terms. And it used to, I used to want to tell teachers all the time, why are we making brochures? Like nobody uses brochures. I don't even know if kids know what brochures are anymore. And then I searched in Canva and they have brochures. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't say that anymore, but, <laughs> but they do have brochures. And you can also find other uh, more relevant or, you know, things that students may know uh, topics as well. Oh, that's 
not the other one. I had a student uh, in in seventh grade and I had introduced Canva and he's like, oh, I have a t-shirt business. I've been making t-shirt designs in Canva for like a year. I was like, serious? <laughs> Like, oh yeah. That is so cool. Canva's my go-to for that. I was like, all right. Was it back to school? BT, uh... I have students excited when I mention anything from TikTok to Instagram because so many of them can't have that yet because they're too young. So they're like, oh, I should make one for my mom or dad or someone. <laughs> like, okay, that works. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then we also created one for back to school um, because, of course, you know, we're all looking for new things as we're coming back to school and we're sharing content with teachers, trying to help them uh, jazz up their classrooms. And oh my goodness, we've had so much fun ordering actually from the Canva print uh, feature and the quality is amazing. Um, we've enjoyed the stickers and the postcards. Um, they Those two have been in particular. Oh, and t-shirts. We've ordered t-shirts as well from mm -hmm. Canva. Um, but we wanted to show teachers, of course, classroom decor kits where they could decorate their entire classroom or even accent um, decor that they're buying in the stores, uh, back to school newsletters, and then like first day activities where they can get to know each other and their students. And we'll, we'll send you these links in just a second. Um, we do have a really cute notebook that um, we put together and we have a template for it as well that we can um, drop in there. Um, but this one is Canva. Notebook. You keep talking. Okay. Um, so back, back to school, there are tons and tons of um, things available for back to school. Goal setting is huge. Mm -hmm. We love having students, you know, track their goals and everything. And um, they, you know, own that and, you know, try to achieve their goals. And we, we use OneNote for that. So um, you can also do it in Canva too. create some really great uh, goal setting designs. But that's also what we love about Canva is that a lot of a lot of things actually embed into Canva, but then Canva also embeds into other apps that we love. So like OneNote, for example, we embed, um, you know, we download PDFs from Canva and upload them into OneNote or we embed Canva design straight into OneNote. So that makes us really happy. So this is super cute. Isn't this adorable? Salih, again, made this no. adorable little so notebook. I, and so it has all the things yeah. we just showed you, which was this perfect order. Back to school, <laughs> classroom templates, oh, um, the student templates. Mm. And then we have a, a template for this actual creation. Because when we shared this out, everyone was like, do you have the template for that? How do you create that? <laughs> so you just click on the button, I mean, the tab of the notebook, and then you can go back home and go to each one, um, just like a normal notebook. Or you can flip through here as well. Uh, but... A top 10, what was that one? Do you remember? You know, I can't. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. These were like, <laughs> we just pulled out 10 of our favorites that we think are teacher templates that must, they must have. So we pulled out top 10 uh, where you can click and go to those as well. I was so excited when they added the whiteboard feature. Oh, yeah. It's so awesome. Right. And then, of course, like Jenny mentioned, this last tab is Teach with Canva. Canva has so many amazing resources for educators that I also don't think we tap into enough yeah. um, to learn from. The design school is incredible. Mm -hmm. And I love that they have courses for students that just walk them straight through. Here's an activity. Go and do it. And you can learn, watch the video, and then go and do. So I think it's just a great opportunity for teachers to take these lessons. And just if, especially if you're introducing Canva, this is a great way to do it. And especially if you're not feeling extremely confident the uh, courses that are in here are great to do in your class so that you don't have to worry about being a master of it because none of us are masters or, you know, but these um, are great supports to use in your classroom. And Jacqueline, yes, you can use all of this in Google Classroom. Um, if you have Google Classroom, all you have to do is connect your students or your, your uh, set, set up an educator account and connect your students. Um, Scott Noons is great. If your school is not connected, he can get your whole school connected or district. It's free. And then once you have the students in there, you can you can post a design or an assignment directly to Google Classroom from Canva. Um, the teachers in my school love doing that. Yeah. This one is actually the template. If not, oh, is it Canva one. book? No. Sorry, we're sending you that some. That one is the right one. Do oh, okay, one. okay. <laughs> we're sending you the bitly, so this of one the is notebook the, um, with all of them, template. too. That one's the template. Oh, and we'll send you the template, too, in case anybody wants to make their own notebook. Because I did get that question on TikTok a few times after we shared it. Some people were like, wait, how'd you do that? Show us how you did that. And so I was like, okay, here's how I made it. 
And then um, I just shared the template link, of course. That's what makes it Canva great too. And they could go change it out and make it their own uh, with whatever they wanted. All right, I'm adding that in now. And um, Heather and I, we've been playing around a ton with, uh, so I love holidays and Halloween's my favorite. So um, another thing you can do is you can go in and you can, so I made this, I, it's a hybrid template. I made some of it from scratch and then I looked at other templates and borrowed and stole and, and personalized it and um, made it appropriate for the grade level. And I like to tell teachers that Canva is teachers pay teachers, but for free. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you yeah, have all the yeah. resources, you can, you can look it up. And um, again, whatever you find, you remix, uh, reuse or recycle. Uh, so this is this is kind of like a, a writing assignment. It's genres, hocus pocus, genres and focus. And it's looking at um, the characteristics of hocus pocus, the movie, and whether or not it's more horror or fantasy. And they have to okay. look at I have to stop you for a second. I need everyone to look at their eyes. Uh, <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to point that out before you scroll that. <laughs> yeah, and um, another thing you can do to customize these templates is, I like I'm, I'm a, I like to draw, so um, I go into Procreate and I actually drew the Sanderson sisters and added them in, and then I just added these I just added these googly eyeballs on top of them. So and then you know, the animated, the, the animated um, bubbles. And um, I put in the whole like lesson plan here, which I'll share with you in a second. Fantasy. What is fantasy? What is horror? And then um, I, the beautiful, one of the things I love is that you can actually, the embed feature. So your hyperdocs, like the hyper, I, so I would, once I'm done with this, I would love for us to go in and click on your hyperdoc like example, because I, I really want to see what's under that. <laughs> but um, they, they have, uh, I've, I've bedded videos and this is exploring genres. There's fantasy, there's, there's elements of horror. And then we've got our little fair model where they have to um, kind of define what fantasy is. And then again, what horror is, and then they have to write an argumentative essay on um which one they believe you know it is and then i've created almost like a hyper doc where they have to organ it's kind of like introducing the content and it takes them through uh instructions on how to write an argumentative essay and then we have a little graphic organizer to plan it and then finally they write it mm, so so fun i'm sure they love that I'm going to stop sharing because I, I really want you guys to bring back up that the doc with the, the hyper docs. Oh, let's uh, see. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, we have a couple examples, but they're really just templates, links to templates that you could use as a hyper doc. Um, that would be great. Um, so yeah. teachers who don't know what hyper docs are, do you guys want to kind of explain and um, talk yeah. about the template? Sure. So we love using HyperDocs. Um, in fact, Lisa Highfield, who wrote the HyperDoc handbook, um, taught us about them. Uh, we come from uh, a Microsoft background and many times in Microsoft, I think I'll have to go share our screen too. Okay. <laughs> many times, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen HyperDocs used much within our groups and within our teacher groups. And so um, I honestly, this is so sad and kind of embarrassing now that I know what hyperdocs are but in the moment <laughs> I thought it was just a doc with links in it like a web quest yeah. back in the day you know and so I was like oh okay like I don't know how this is um innovative but it it must be and so um as she explained it to us we realized oh this is the entire lesson cycle uh organized and curated within a doc it's not just a doc with links um, and which I love uh, because I feel like then students know the direction we're going. And I also stay on track and know exactly where I'm going and make sure that I'm getting in those important pieces within my lesson cycle. So this is back in in the notebook. We just clicked on the teacher search term section and then under HyperDoc, we just kind of curated a few ideas that help us when we're trying to design our HyperDocs. So we were looking for templates that would be structurally good with like the boxes and things. And again, we do a lot of, you know, the choice board and we focus in on that engaged piece um, during the lesson cycle. 
And so, I mean, just like you do, we remix all of these templates, not to say lessons, right? Or lesson plans for so, you know, to say, but it, you know, if they have boxes, one would be engage, the next one would be explore, the next one would be uh, direct teach. And so it's just walking you through the entire uh, lesson cycle uh, into each one. And a lot of times we'll take that and then um, link it to another page and essentially build out just like your great example of the Hocus Pocus, an entire lesson built out and linked and interlinked within Canva. Like this grocery list, mm -hmm. like, you know, you just don't really think gr search grocery list or list to find something with these cute boxes. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you that divided up lesson piece. And while we're on that, I know you, you just talked about um, decorating your digital space and your home. It's like a huge, um, uh, what's the right words? A, a, a big passion of ours is making sure that we're creating content that is digitally appealing for students. I think during COVID, one of the things that was quickly evident, I'm sure you guys saw it as well, was we were in information overload uh, and text overload. Everything was text heavy that our kids were bringing home and that teachers were sharing because in the moment we had to just get information out. And um, we realized real quick that we need to learn how to create content that is visually appealing. Um, I want to look at content that's visually appealing. I want to learn that way. And when I'm reading content, I'm drawn to um, organized content, um, graphically organized. And so um, we want to make sure our teachers understand how to do that and help them and empower them with Canva, especially to do that. I think the graphic organizer is probably my favorite search term just because it does give you so many different flow charts and, mm -hmm. and ways to add those boxes in and the different pieces of the HyperDoc. Um, but the list is also really mm -hmm. good. So just kind of thinking, and that's where Salih is so talented in that she can see something and like think of a million different things you can do with it. And I'm like, huh? Like, <laughs> I have to have like black and white, slap me in the face. This is what you can do. And she has to explain it to me sometimes like I, five times. I but. don't have it in the notebook, but I did make, um, I don't know where it's at. It's in my Canva account. Probably named wrong totally because that's oh, who I am. I'm the organized chaos one. Uh, but I did make an example of taking one of these and then remixing it into a hyperdoc so people could see um, how to do that. Uh, sorry, I don't have it handy with me, but that's, like I said, don't know where it's going to be labeled. <laughs> I can definitely send it to you to share out later. Another um, framework that teachers can use is that design thinking framework. So if you're in a STEM or a maker classroom or you're doing, um, you know, a maker activity or genius hour in the regular classroom, using that, uh, the modes of design thinking, those five modes and creating activities within a document and, and lessons and uh, places for students to place learning artifacts. That's another good way to create a hyperdoc. And I love, I love your tips for like, look at a grocery list, find the boxes and then organize it into uh, a hyperdoc. So the, I think the big takeaway that teachers should have is that you don't have to find a content based template. You can, right. you can, as long as you have a template that is aesthetically pleasing and it's laid out like you want to lay out your content, you can use it, you can remix it and, and, and don't, don't limit yourself to be like, oh, I need a math worksheet on this mm -hmm. or I need a math template on that or, or um, we're doing a, a, a hamburger writing activity, like shake it up, remix it, um, be inspired by the designs, but don't lock yourself into them. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I actually sure. think it's better in a more quality way of teaching because a lot of times when we go buy content uh, that's already designed and ready to go on a website, it's not necessarily in, as in-depth or necessarily even covering exactly what we need it to. But by using templates in Canva, I can fully customize all of that content and pretty quick uh, to make sure that I'm also not spending too much time on it. Yep, absolutely. And um, I, I have a design thinking template that I'm just going to drop in the chat for those of you who are watching. And then um, I just got asked the graphic organizer. Where did it go? Is the graphic organizer in Canva? There are a ton of graphic organizers in Canva. V is limiting. There are many. It's just a matter of finding the one. <laughs> yes. So. And I think we searched graphic organizer yeah, and so. found all of those templates, yeah. but you can search 
um, gosh, you know, mind maps. You can search all kinds of things and you will find graphic yeah. organizers. I mean, whiteboard templates is one of my favorites, mm -hmm. even for graphic organizers, because they have so many laid out nicely in that too. Absolutely. So um, this is just like a quick, there's a video on design thinking here and it, it covers Young the modes of design music. thinking. And then students just drag and drop the modes onto the colored tape and then to kind of explain it. Uh, and it, it takes them through this whole process and they have to like put where they are at the top and um, color each, each, little, each little thing. But to search templates, if we go home and we type in graphic organizer, Again, 418 templates. You've mm -hmm. got concept maps. You've got problem solving, main ideas, mind mapping. It's all here. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of finding which one you want to use and customizing it with your content. Exactly. Yep. So. And that's what we love is just finding those other terms that you wouldn't like. We think, okay, graphic organizer, but what other things like grocery list or yeah. top three mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. things like that are things you wouldn't normally think about. But mm -hmm. um there, you can and look at those and turn something else into that something. is the genius of your curation. You've <laughs> gone through the effort and the um, uh, the curation of taking those terms that other teachers or people wouldn't think of and grouping them. And uh, we appreciate that uh, like a ton. It, it's going to cut down educators time. It's so helpful. It is. That's what we were. That's what we were hoping. Because yeah. when we think about it, we're like, we have to sit there and brainstorm ideas and terms, and we're like, man, what was that term again? What did we search? I can't remember. And then we're like, okay, we need to start writing these down and making a list because mm -hmm. it, it it needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, time. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this because I didn't do it. Um, make sure as you're creating in Canva that you have folders and that yes. you are filing things into folders. <laughs> Once you get up to over a thousand designs, you can't remember. Again, I don't save my design. I'm like, did I save that as design thinking? Did I save it as DT? Mm -hmm. I'm with or you. did you even rename it? And it's just blue and white template <laughs> with dogs. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. We do use folders now extensively as well. But the, what made me start using them, I will tell you, we also have, you know, a, a million designs in there. But what did make me start using folders was when they added folders to um, the more, the three dots and more where I can go grab um, something from inside of a folder and add it to a design. Uh -huh. So that was huge for me because I didn't want to have to scroll through all my designs to find them. So having them in folders definitely has uh, eased my creation and made yeah. it a lot faster. Because yeah. there's always something that you need from another design. Always. You're like, oh, I don't want to you know, copy all of the <laughs> individual elements and paste it. But yeah. then when you can just go and grab it, it really, really made a difference. Yeah. So if you go to more, the, um, I've already added folders here, but mm -hmm. like if you went to more, you could add, you could add folders. I have folders and you can see the different folders that I've created here. Um, and the other beautiful thing is all your designs. So anything that you've created, I could add a page and I could pull from it. So let's say I want to use this hocus pocus, um, argumentative um, plan for, for students, but I want to change the theme. We're doing something else. It's maybe, maybe the second argument. I can totally change it. I can change all of this, but I don't have to start from scratch because I've already built it once. It's genius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just any of this. Oh, add a page. Now I'm going to add this. Then you just go in and you resize things and rework it and put it in the format that you want. Yep. But yeah, I, I've even, I've got folders, like I'm big in the stranger thing. So I've, I've taken all my, <laughs> I've taken all my stranger things stuff and I put it in like one folder. Mm -hmm. It goes on and on. So um, I will go ahead and get out of that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to search terms, making sure that you're able to search your own dashboard and find your own stuff. Um, starred. So I have things that I've, I don't know why these are the only things starred, but um <laughs> You can go, you can go in, let's see, let me go back into here. If I find, if I'm searching in elements and I like this RSVP, I can go up here 
and I can star it or I can add it to a folder. So you can go ahead and create folders of all your favorite elements. You can do it by theme. You can do it by month that more. What or whatever else. I know it's there. Yeah. I just do it as much as I should either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. one thing I struggle with too. Yeah. yeah. It's because we sometimes you'll find a template and then it's that, you, you know, it's a weird name. Oh and goodness. so then you go back to use that template. And you're like, I don't know, you know, what the name is because now I've changed no. the name of it. Or yes. so like starring things, favoriting it. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great tip. Does that happen? Y'all, I find a template and I, I like re, I use it, but I don't use all of it, just some of it. And then like two days later, I want to go back and add another page from the template. And I'm like, what was the name of that? Where'd it go? Like, yes. I can't remember. So if I would start starring things, that would really help me. Uh, okay, I'm going to start starring things, Jenny, yep. just for you. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I've shared your your templates for templates with all of our viewers. It's super mm -hmm. helpful. And um, I definitely plan on going back and exploring it more. I've seen it. I've seen it on Twitter. And I'm like, man, we need, we need to get them back on the show and share this. This is fantastic. Oh, but, for sure. um, I, I will spend the appropriate time to, to go through and explore those. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much for having us on. Last question of the night. Are you guys dressing up for Halloween? And if so, what are you guys going to be? Well, well, we have some pig <laughs> costumes. <laughs> pig costumes. <laughs> We also have a peanut green butter, peanut butter and jelly outfits. Green wigs. We do have green wigs. We have an Oreo, but Peyton's boyfriend took the other part of the Oreo, um, so we only have one part of the Oreo. Yeah, we were dragons <laughs> love tacos one year, so we have dragon and a taco head. I have a whoopee cushion. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't really thought about yeah. it, but but you know we probably we have will. a basket yeah. of costumes we could pull from. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, we went peanut butter and yeah, jelly. Yeah, peanut year. butter and That's jelly right. last year. Yeah. We uh we did dragons. We we did a um a wheel of fortune before and after and it was mother of dragons love tacos and uh, <laughs> so i went as mother of dragons i dressed up finn as a taco and um connor was a dragon and it was, it was all it was fun oh i love that heather what about you what are you what are you going to be this year um i don't know what i'm going to be um killian my soon-to-be four-year-old is going to be a bulldozer Oh, nice. I'm going to spray paint some boxes and he has to wear it around. And then um, when he gets candy, they can put it right in the scoop part That's of the bulldozer. Cute. That's cute. I love it. Oh, my goodness. My favorite outfit or dress up of my son was a Lego that we made from a box mm -hmm. and we spray painted. And it I mean, it was the best costume he's ever worn. So I know the bulldozer is going to be mm -hmm. a winner. For sure. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I hope you have a fantastic Taco Tuesday and uh, I hope everyone enjoys Halloween. We will see you guys before then. We have more Halloween uh, templates and tricks up our sleeves and treats. So yeah. we'll see you next week. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Courses by Teacher Goals. Register now for